الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. This morning, يا إخوان وأخوات, I plan to uh, piggyback on a comment that the Sheikh made yesterday, or a part of his talk, or something he referenced yesterday in his talk. And I kind of reflected on it a little bit yesterday, and I thought maybe I would share some of those reflections this morning. And he basically spoke about Iblis and the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Iblis and the company of Al Malaika, the angels, to prostrate to Adam. And that his response, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers from the Quran, Abba wa stakbar. That Iblis, he was guilty of al iba wal istikbar. So basically, this is a haughtiness or an arrogance or a type of pride that causes a person to refuse to accept the truth. And as a result of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counted him amongst the kuffar, amongst the people who disbelieve. So there's a few things from this. First of all, a shaitan, as the scholars of Islam have agreed, and the scholars of uh, Usul al-Fiqh have mentioned, anytime something is attributed to him, because he is the eternal enemy of mankind, and because he is the, I guess you could say, inventor of sin, he is the role model and the poster child for disobedience. Anything that is attributed to a shaitan is haram. Automatically, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is from the character of the shaitan or the shaitan does this, etc., you know as a Muslim that that thing is haram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this al-iba wal istikbar, this haughtiness that causes you not to accept the truth as one of the characteristics of a shaitan. So you know it's haram. In addition to this, Allah called the shaitan when he made this al-iba wal istikbar, he called him a kafir, which lets you know that this is a type of kufr, wal kufru and wa. There's different types of kufr. And one type of kufr is when you reject the truth out of pride and arrogance. Another point is how did this pride and arrogance manifest itself? So first of all, we know as Muslims, if we want to remain Muslims, that we can't have this quality. This quality of al-ibaq wa istikbar. The truth comes to us and we reject it out of pride and arrogance. That we believe we have some assumed superiority or assumed we basically feel that our status authorizes us not to follow the truth or that we are somehow absolved from following the truth because of who we are or what we're made of etc so this is a quality that we as believers can never have another point as i said is how did this ibadistic bar how did it manifest itself Allah tells us another part of the Qur'an. He says, قَالَ يَا إِبْلِيسِ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدْ لِمَا خَلَقَتُ بِيَدَيْ He said that Allah said, O Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating to the one I created with my own hands? قَالَ خَلَقَتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ he said, you created me from fire, and you created him from clay. And there's two things here. One of them is justifying defiance, justifying disobedience. There's no justification for disobeying Allah. And there's a contrast here. The angels were commanded and they 
obeyed. They submitted. And Iblis was commanded and he disobeyed and justified his disobedience. If a Muslim disobeys because we're human, we fall short. We disobey recognizing our error. But the way of the shaitan and the way the believers can never follow is if they disobey Allah and justify their disobedience. Yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, we're supposed to do that, but I didn't do that because. There's no because. That we don't justify our disobedience. Then how did he justify it? He justified it with a, as the Sheikh mentioned yesterday, which is the point that really uh, stuck out to me. He justified it with a rational argument. He rationalized. He used logic. He, in my mind, fire is superior to clay. So why should someone made from fire prostrate to someone made from clay? And so that's another problem is when we feel that, or this another form of li'ibah wal istikbar, is when we feel that if we don't understand something, we're not obligated to comply with it. Or if it doesn't make sense to us, we don't have to submit to it. We don't have to perform it. And this is another mistake. That the deen is not a deen of ra'i. It's not a deen of opinions. It's not a deen of I think, I feel. Well, that makes sense to me. Doesn't it make sense to you? It's not a deen like that. It's a deen of submission. That's what Islam means, to submit, to surrender. And that means when Allah says, we do, without questioning. La yus'alu amma yaf'alu wa hum yus'alun. He is not asked about what he does. But they will be asked about what they do. Did they submit? Did they accept? Did they bow down like the angels bow down? Bow down. Allah says, we do. So this is another point. And the companions, they understood this very well. And they conveyed it to us in different forms to echo the sentiment of Allah and to drive home the point that, O Muslim, there are going to be things in deen that you don't understand. And don't make your performance of those things, your compliance with the deen, predicated on understanding. But do as you've been instructed. And that is the true submission. As we have the statement of Ali and radiallahu anhu, who he said, he said the religion was based upon opinions, <clears throat> logic, reasoning. لَكَانَ أَسْفَرِ الْخُفِّ أَوْلَى بِالْمَسْحِ مِنْ أَعْلَى Then it would make more sense to wipe huh, the bottom of the sock as opposed to the top of it. Why? Because that's the part that gets what? Dirty. That's the part that touches the ground. But I saw the Messenger of Allah, or we saw the Messenger of Allah wipe the top of his sock. So we wipe the top of our socks. Okay? Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ when he would travel, he would combine and shorten prayers. But he combined certain prayers. He didn't combine Fajr and Dhuhr. Why not? A person could sleep in, right? He could sleep in, he could wake up and pray Dhuhr and Fajr together. That makes sense, doesn't it? I'm asking, does it make sense, doesn't it? He could sleep in, couldn't he? It's rational, it's logical. But that's not the way the Prophet did it. So we can't combine Fajr and Dhuhr. We have to combine Dhuhr and Asr. Maghrib and Isha. He used to shorten prayers. He would shorten Dhuhr and Asr. He would shorten all the prayers which are Arba Rakat. All the prayers which are four units. He would shorten those. Didn't shorten them Fajr. Didn't make it one. <clears throat> didn't shorten Maghrib. He didn't make it one and a half. Right? So we have to follow. Why? Why, not th why this and not this? It's not a rational thing all the time. It's not a logical thing. It's what? Tawqifiya. It's what Allah decreed and we just submit to it. But you, uh, the final point I want to mention about this manifestation of al-ibaw al-istikbar, again, that we need to avoid because it's haram and because it's a type of kufr, is... How did Iblis justify? Yeah, he justified. He used a rational argument. But what rational argument did he give? 
The rational argument that he gave was, I'm better than him. I was created from fire, and he was created from clay. So basically, in Iblis's mind, the unsur, the element that was the source of his creation, that made him superior to what? The one whose element or elements were inferior. So basically, what we could say is that a shaitan was the first racist, first unsuri. And again, inequality of Iblis is a quality the Muslims need to avoid. They need to understand that it's what? Haram. It's illegal. And that doesn't mean, though, that the Muslims avoid it. Right? A lot of qualities of Iblis that the Muslims, unfortunately, they practice. And unfortunately, this is one of them. Do we have a race problem in Islam? La wallah. We don't have a race problem in Islam. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'il li ta'arafu. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. Allah says, O people, indeed we created you from a single man and a single woman. And we made from that couple nations and tribes so that you would come to know each other. So you would come to know the power of Allah. That from this couple, he was able to make what? All these colors and races and ethnicities and different types, ashkal, different types of what? Appearances and forms and colors, etc. Inna akramakum in Allah yatqaakum. And the most, and this most honored in the sight of Allah are those of you who are most pious. So we don't have a race issue in Islam. But we do have a race issue amongst Muslims. We do have an issue. Now does that mean that there's not people who don't see color? We hear this all the time. I don't see color. Does this exist? Does that mean we don't have people like this in Islam because we have a race problem in Islam? No, we have people like that. And I know some of them. I've been friends with some of them. I've interacted with some of them. And you can just tell by their interactions that they don't see color. When they interact with people, everybody is the same. But you do have people who what? They do see it. And they do treat people differently because of their color. Because of where they're from. Because of their language. Because of their ethnicity. And this is wrong. And I'll be honest with you, I used to be very sensitive about this. And I used to act like it didn't exist amongst Muslims. Because certain people can't say that there's racism. Because when they say it, they're just dismissed because they're considered to be super sensitive. Oh, they always say that because they're from this race or they're from this ethnicity. So because of that, you automatically, you don't want to be put in that category. You don't want to be dismissed. You don't want to be... Uh, you don't want to be looked at as someone who what? Is always using the race card, so to speak. But no one objectively studies our history, the history of Islam, and our reality, and then says it doesn't exist. No one says that. But what is critical is that the Muslim is honest with himself first, and honest with his brethren second, and if there's an issue, that we what? We attack it head on, and we try to root it out. Because this unsuriya, this racism, if you will, is a satanic quality. A quality that because it is attributed to a shaitan, it is something which what? Is haram, as we said. And it's one of the manifestations of what? Kufr. It's one of the manifestations of Kufr. The way that his iba wal istikbar, the way that it what? Manifested itself. So it's something to reflect on, Ya Ikhwan. And like I said, uh, the Shaykh, he kind of brought these, some of these things out yesterday, or he alluded to them, and I reflected. And this is my expounding on what he uh, had mentioned. And 
In closing, I'll share with you the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ informs us of the consequences of having these two demonic qualities of rejecting the truth out of pride and assumed superiority or racism. He says in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر so No person will enter into paradise who has a mustard seed's weight of pride in his heart. So a man from the people, he said, Ya Rasulullah, إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَكُونَ ثَوْبُهُ حَسَنًا وَنَعْلَهُ حَسَنًا he says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, a man likes to wear a nice thobe, a nice garment, and likes to wear nice shoes. So this person thought that this was a type of what? Pride and arrogance. So the Prophet responded and clarified. He said, Inna Allah jameelun yuhibbu al-jamal. Allah is beautiful, and He loves that you beautify yourselves. Al-kibru batul al-haqq. He said, pride is rejecting the truth. Feeling that because of your status, the truth does not apply to you. Yeah, it's truth, but it doesn't apply to me. The angels can bow down, but me, I was created from fire. I'm not bowing down to clay. That attitude, that's pride. And that you look down upon what? People. That somehow you are better than others. Just because. Not because of something that you did. Not because of some virtuous deed that you practice. Not because of some piety that you have obtained. Just because. Just because of your language. Just because of your ethnicity. Just because of the color of your skin. This is what? This is pride. And this, if you have a mustard seed weight of that, it will keep you out of paradise. So let's reflect upon that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who avoid every type of kufr. Particularly at Iba or the Sikh Bar. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka nabi Muhammadin wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in. No comments, no questions, no complaints. Mumtaz. Have a good morning. A good Arafah, ya ikhwan. So you guys know that even if you're not on the mountain, even if you're not on the plain of Arafah, it's still Arafah. A day of fasting, a day of reflection, a day of dhikr. A day of recitation of the Quran. So let's be about that today, inshallah. May Allah bless us all to take full advantage. Okay.